Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School and we are going to start our video series that's going to cover topic 4.2 of the CD. Now 4.2 is a pretty long topic, very important, a lot of special ramifications that would be seen on the advanced placement calc exam. It's all about connecting position, velocity, and acceleration, and particle motion. Straight line motion is what we tend to refer to it as. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce that idea and touch upon a really short example, but for the most part, just lay some groundwork for your understanding of this particular concept and set up some of the future videos that you can watch. So according to my notes here, if you were to, to take a look at them, um, especially if you're a student at Avon High School, you have access. You know, we're going to revisit an idea that we originally started to talk a little bit about at the very end of the last unit. When we study motion initially in calculus, we consider what is referred to as straight line motion. And so we end up being very con concerned with, with four concepts, position, velocity, speed, which is kind of a new one here, and then acceleration. Those four things really set the foundation for particle motion. So let's talk about position. As we talked about earlier, it says notation for position functions with respect to time usually is represented by an S of T or an X of T. The S of T is kind of strange. It comes from Latin situi, something along that lines. But X of T is probably a little bit more common because these particles will tend to move along an X axis. Now, if a object happens to move along a Y axis, it's a possibility, then we might use Y of T. But we know that our particles are going to move on a straight line. So for this very simple example, if S of T is T squared minus 2T minus 3, show the position on the number line for times 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Well, you could plug those numbers very easily into that equation. You probably wouldn't need a calculator. Now, however, if you wanted to use a calculator, there would be nothing against it. And you could define the function or enter the function, say, on a machine like the TI Inspire, follow it up with the such that t equal. Now if you want to type or enter all these in at once, then you would have to go ahead and use these braces if you're using the TI Inspire. And then you could separate all of the numbers by commas. If you're going to do something, say, like this on, let's say, a TI-84, well, I suppose you could enter the function as the Y1, and then you could go to the home screen, and you could very meticulously, certainly you did it this way, it would work. Um, there's probably some other more convenient ways to take care of this, but as long as you get those values some way in a fairly efficient manner, all is good. So what would this look like? Well, what you're going to do here, if I can find my pen, is you're going to locate these numbers, and we end up with negative 3, which is right here. And I might say that that occurs at time 0. Okay, now I went ahead and recorded the values, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0, and 5 that we had on our calculator. And as I enter these onto my screen, I can just also state the time at which we were able to arrive at that point. Now notice negative 3 occurs twice. Again, I can show you from the TI Inspire. Negative 3 occurred twice right there. And then I have a 0 and 5 that's going to occur at, looks like, times 3 and time 4. And so I would denote that as such, and then we're good to go. Now, what this is really saying, if you really want to get down to the nuts and bolts of this, maybe we have a particle that's denoted by this blue dot. And as you can see, at time 0, it starts right there. What we do know about this particle is that it's kind of moving like this, right? Time 1, time 2, here we are at time 3, and then at time 4. So that might be the path that that particle takes. What we don't know is the speeds of those particles. Not that we can't find it, because we certainly could, but I didn't depict that in this particular demonstration, nor did I pick its velocity or its acceleration. So we have some other things that we can certainly throw into the mix 
But for right now, that's about all that we need to know about position. Now, velocity gets to be a little bit more complicated because of the idea of speed. But what we know here is that when an object moves, its position changes over time. So we can say that the velocity function v of t is the change of position function over time. We know this to be the derivative, and we can say that v of t is s prime of t. So for convenience sake, we're going to find, define v of t in the following way. So you've got v of t greater than 0, v of t less than 0, and v of t equals 0. That's really only the one of the three things that can happen. So if you think about horizontal line, and this is what you're going to see much more often, when you see this, we have to really be confident with the fact that a positive velocity means the object is moving right. We just want to commit that to memory. I have a really wonderful demonstration that I plan to show to my students when we're face to face uh, in the coming week when we're talking about velocity. If velocity is negative on the other hand, then you want to connect that to the particle moving to the left. And of course, the velocity being zero means the object is stopped. That's probably common sense. Now, in the rare instances that you might have a particle that's moving along a, a vertical line, then you want to equate positive velocity with moving up. Change the color on that so it's not so confusing. And if you have a velocity that's negative, then we're going to think about that object moving down. Really focus very intently on those. You want to make sure that those are very confident and comfortable with you. And then speed. The common misconception with speed is that, oh, speed is the same as velocity, but that's not really the case. Speed, unlike velocity, doesn't need a direction, right? It's not a vector, all right? We don't really care what direction we're going. We only focus on the absolute value of that velocity, whether it was left, right, up, down. And so we always think of speed as just that, the absolute value of velocity. So you'll never ever have a speed that's necessarily a negative number. I'm going to remember that too. And of course, the speed of an object must either be positive or zero, as we kind of mentioned. And then finally, we got this idea of acceleration. It says the definition of acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. That's important. We know this to be a derivative, and we can thus say that a is the first derivative of v or the second derivative of position, something that we talked about in topic 3.6. So given a position function s of t, we can now determine both velocity and acceleration. Now, if you want to think about this in a practical application, on your cars, you've got two vi devices that change the velocity. What are those two devices called? Think about that for a little bit. <laughs> and maybe you said the gas pedal, which is perfectly OK. But we also call the gas pedal the accelerator. So that would be one of these answers. And it kind of makes sense. An accelerator is something that changes the velocity. So the change in velocity is acceleration. Now, the other thing that changes the velocity is called the brake. <laughs> I guess we wouldn't call it the decelerator, although it does have some, you know, connection. I mean, I think it would make sense, maybe not so much grammatically, but in the context of this particular problem, I guess it would make sense. All right, if I go to the next page here, for convenience sake, we are going to define the acceleration as such. So acceleration can also be positive, negative, or zero, and we want to be very comfortable with this idea. If you have a positive acceleration, and once again, you're talking about motion along a horizontal line, objects accelerate to the right. So always equate positive with right and negative with left and we probably will be OK. That's going to work with both velocity and acceleration. Likewise, if you have acceleration positive with a vertical moving object, that vertical moving object is going to accelerate upwards. Or in the case of a negative acceleration, it's going to accelerate downwards. Now, if acceleration is equal to 0, that means that the velocity is not changing. Now, be careful. Just because 
an object's acceleration is zero doesn't mean that the object has stopped. It just means that the velocity is not changing. It's basically traveling at a constant rate, right? A constant speed. I guess you could think of it like that. The velocity is not changing. It's got velocity, but it's not going up or going down. What do you guys think about this one? What device on your car will keep the car's acceleration equal to zero? Think about that one for a second. It is called the cruise control, especially if you have a newer car. I don't know if there's too many cars that probably don't have cruise control anymore. But if you think about it, when you're driving and you want your car to always travel the same velocity, you would just activate your cruise control and your car will no longer accelerate or decelerate. So just because you have a positive acceleration doesn't mean that you're moving to the right. And that's where things get very interesting. For instance, suppose that you were walking to the right. Let's say that we have you. Right here you are. You are this person and you are walking to the right. All of a sudden, a large wind starts to blow to the left. So you have this wind right here, this this yellow wind, what would occur? Well, if you think about this, more likely than not, that's going to cause you to probably slow down, right? Maybe you've been in this situation before. You're walking, you get into a headwind, and all of a sudden, whoa, It's you've got to work a little harder to try to maintain the same velocity. So more likely than not, you start to slow down, and that's really important. That's an idea that we're going to start visiting over and over. So I guess the idea here, you'd say, well, you'd slow down. Now, the next video is going to talk a little bit more about what happens when you have a velocity of a certain sign and an acceleration of a certain sign. Right now, what you've seen is that if velocity is positive and acceleration is negative, that means we're slowing down. The object is slowing down. You want to tune into the next few videos to really tap into that idea because it's definitely going to be asked on the AP exam, and it's a pretty easy question to score some points on. So tune in to some of the next videos, and we'll check that out. Thanks for joining.